Hello, this is John Sims with the Advised Serviceability Engineering Team. This video will cover how to configure IP Office SSL VPN NAT to remotely access the Avaya Session Border Controller for Enterprise. Before the live configuration demonstration, first a few notables. When IP Office is paired with an Avaya Session Border Controller for Enterprise, we can configure the IP Office SSL VPN NAT option to remotely access the ASBCE. A simple pre-requirement is that the IP Office has been successfully onboarded, meaning connected to a VIA or partner via SSL VPN for full remote access through secure SSL VPN tunnel. You'll see in our demonstration that we're going to configure two NAT rules which are required in the IP Office SSL VPN configuration to forward port requests for ASBCE management to the Avaya Session Border Controller for Enterprise Management Interface otherwise known as the M1 interface. We're going to forward SSH requests over TCP 222 and web management requests over TCP 443. And lastly an important note is that while upgrades may be delivered over the SSL VPN connection. Don't trigger that in the Session Border Controller for Enterprise web GUI. Instead, deliver the upgrades to the Session Border Controller using Secure FTP or Secure Copy over TCP 222. That's recommended and then you can trigger the actual upgrade once the package has been delivered through the ASBCE web GUI. Okay, so you see I'm in the manager client and I've pulled a configuration and we have an Avaya support service which means it's been successfully onboarded to Avaya. And under the NAT tab now we're going to make use of custom rules. So we'll add a custom TCP port number 222 and then we'll give the internal IP address of the M1 interface. Again, that's important that we take any request for port 222 and we send it to the SBC internal IP address. Again, resolving on port 222. That's what it's listening for on the M1 interface. Then I'll add a second custom rule on port 443. And again, we're going to send that traffic to the same address 1.133 for our internal M1 interface on the session border controller and again responding or listening on port 443. So you see our two rules that's what's required to onboard the SBC behind the IP office using SSL VPN NAT. Now you see if we save this up it's a merge event it doesn't require a reboot and I'm going to save that up now. One thing to touch on is the fact that you may need to set an IP route off one of your interfaces for the IP office to reach the M1 interface. The M1 interface for the SBC has to be routable on a management LAN or internal LAN for the, in the customer network. So you may have to add a custom route for the IP office to follow to reach that M1 interface. So you see I have many routes in my lab system test configuration. So I'm just going to give a, an example here on how to add, add a route, a unique route, to route to the M1 interface. So we had that on 192.168.1.133. So I'll select New, add a new route to the 192.168.1.1. .network, so 1.0. And then I'll leave the mask as a 24-bit mask and I'll add in the gateway IP address of 192.168.1.1 and you'll see if we select destination I can select LAN 2 actually I'll drop that down again you'll see LAN 1, LAN 2, Avaya support is actually for the tunnel and remote manager so you have many routing options but in my configuration I'm actually routing tunnel traffic through to LAN 2 to the M1 to the network that can speak to the M1 interface for the session border controller and you see how I have that route now successfully added to the IP office system.
And of course, with any configuration change, we're now going to save that back up to the control unit. And this is also a mergeable event for IP Office. So you see I'm in SSA all the way down in IP networking looking at the support tunnel and I'm in fallback mode so I have no tunnel IP address and soon we'll set that in service to collect tracing. But before we do let's go into system monitor go to filters trace options and under the VPN tab we're going to want to select under SSO VPN section configuration session and session state and then we have another addition here if we do click on development tracing which is dangerous to do usually without the guidance of tier 3 or higher support but in this case you can use development tracing to see an additional NAT monitor in system monitor so we'll go ahead and click that and then select OK for the purpose of this demonstration so now you're going to see me set the tunnel back in service on the bottom of the SSA page and you see how we have been assigned a tunnel IP address. So it's time to check back in with System Monitor and you'll see we have some, and I'll pause the tracing, you'll see we have some good information now traced which is the addition, number one, that we have a connected tunnel and then the addition of a NAT translator. So then if I go to status, NAT status, you'll see where we can then harvest out even more information on current session state with our NAT sessions over the SSL VPN tunnel. And last but not least I have a slide capturing some Sysmon trace snippets showing some common configuration errors or errors that will aid you in troubleshooting. So Sysmon is definitely your friend here because you'll see a lot of good verbose information in System Monitor regarding the SSL VPN tunnel status. So the first one is a DNS configuration issue. You'll either see a DNS server address is not configured or you can see the tunnel respond back into System Monitor that the DNS name resolution is not working correctly to reach the Avaya VPN gateway or the partner's VPN gateway for that matter and then the SSL VPN account password failure clearly shows a SOX user password fail in System Monitor and then finally if you have an IP route issue like I was mentioning trying to route out in this case to SSL VPN was and that means to the internet to reach the VPN gateway you'll see a clear trace indication that we cannot send packets and that the data or connection is not available thank you for your time today we welcome comments questions and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on twitter at avaya mentor for more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.